Hello, YouTube. My name's Denver from Denver and Lily. Um, and this is <laughs> I'm Sniff from Scott and Sniff. And today we're here with Denver of Denver and Lily. Obviously, yeah. the people who make the glasses that we've had a million questions about. And today we're just going to be talking actually with Denver about these glasses. So tell us about your glasses. Like, what in the world inspired this? Um, what in the world inspired this? Um, it kind of came from like a, a kind of a love of um, booze. Um, I was quite into whiskey for a, quite a while, actually beer and, and vodka and, and gin and, um, and wine and a few different things, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say like I, I took it as a sport, I used to play tennis and also drink. Um, so then I designed a glass with uh, one of my mates, Lily or Lively as he likes to call it, um, and, uh, and it seemed to have gone reasonably well. So I've got an uh, engineering, uh, engineering and industrial design background. And uh, Lily does as well, um, and we kind of designed, we used to design furniture actually before. And wow. Um, went across into sort of this thing. So, so show, go ahead and show us the glasses. Um, so this thing is a whiskey glass. It's waterproof and transparent. It's, um, <laughs> it's got all the features that you'd want. No, it, um, we, look at, <laughs> we look at sort of airflow and temperature control, and um, there's a splitting of nose from top to bottom. Um, you can control the temperature if you cup it like that. You can heat it. So. There's a bunch of different things that we put into place um, after speaking to a few different distilleries. So we had a lot of help from um, Sam Simmons, a former world ambassador for Valvani and um, Starwood in, in Australia. Um, and yeah, just ended up with this this sucker here. So instead of like, um, for example, if you look at uh, like another <coughs> glass. Um, <laughs> we can say this isn't anybody's sponsored show. So Nick, sir, can you pass that to me real quick, that glass right there? Yeah, thank you so much. So this is a glass that will remain unnamed. Um, it's just a different shaped glass. It's a different shaped glass, but this, uh, in in my opinion, it's a derivative of a wine glass, and it wasn't, in again, in my opinion, designed from the ground up for spirits. Although it, like, it has a little bit of um, a background with spirits, but uh, yeah, it's a much larger o opening. So if you imagine you taste something, you also want your nose on it. So when you eat something, you also want your nose to smell it. So if you smell uh, while you're eating, you also get more information to your brain, and when you have more information to your brain, you make a better decision. So generally in life, when you have more information, you make a better decision. Um, so that's kind of how that works. And then also we looked at sort of palate delivery and a whole bunch of different things, but the main thing was we're bridging a gap between um, a master distiller. So a master distiller can control what goes into the bottle, yep. um, but they can't control what goes into your mouth. And right. they would love to control that. Um, so we bridged that gap. So we spoke to a bunch of master distillers, saw how their whiskey was, and then how they wanted it to be tasted. And so that, that's how we sort of came up with that, plus um, a few other bits and bobs that we kind of just added a little bit of science. So I've done some reviews on these myself, and I noticed, the first thing I noticed is that when you're drinking from a Glencairn, your nose will come to the edge of the glass or be right above it. Yeah. As opposed to the Denver and Lily, when you're drinking, like your entire nose gets in this. So in terms of retrohaling and tasting flavor because 90% of what you taste is what you know you, you smell and you know yeah. like exactly. getting your nose into this it seems to really enhance the the, the entire experience totes my goats. I don't know if that was a question totes my goats. <laughs> it was a good statement it was a question because I'm trying to understand like you, I mean, you designed this yeah so in terms of of the design there must have been a reason why you decided okay we just need more of the nose but why not go even bigger then like, no, because what happens is, so we don't want circular airflow. So you have wine glasses that have a, like a rounded sort of shape. So for, oh, I don't want to use that. But um, <laughs> let's just say, let's just say that's that's the shape, and you, you can see that it has a circular sort of airflow, and it works really well for like add oxygen wine. Yeah, for like you get wisps of smell that come out. But if you change that from concave to convex, then no longer you have um, circular airflow, but you have a lot of air that comes in, a lot of air that comes out, and what that effectively does is you have um, a lot more smell and you also have like a greater transition in, in smell across a, a certain period of time whereas like for example a circular sort of shaped glass um, would not sort of have that it would take a lot longer and you have to like, sit there and wait and blah 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 so what we're essentially doing is making a lot more whiskey is accessible to a lot more people and you'd be able to get to the notes that experts can get to a lot, a lot quicker, faster a lot faster yeah, that's exactly. awesome so in terms of the design between your regular Denver and Lily glass and then your newest design, which is yeah. the bourbon glass, yeah. honestly, when you, when you sent this to me in the mail, I was like, so, so, you, so you put a base on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, like, a lot of people have come to me and said, like, what's like, a difference you put a stem on it? I was honestly, like, that's yeah, that, that such an improvement that I'm like, wait, what is this? What is the what difference? Is this doing so there's the other part, which is like the cultural difference. 
And then also the way that stuff is distilled. So like you know, as well as I do, that bourbon is made quite differently. And we were in Kentucky and Tennessee last year, do a bit of a fact-finding mission to see if it was worth doing. But um, there are a number of rules uh, for bourbon, to make bourbon, as like I'm not sure these the people would know, but they, they there, there are a bunch of laws. So if you imagine, uh, I don't know to say this, you know all this. Um, there's a giant Hawaiian pizza, and there's a Hawaiian pizza of whiskey flavor. And there's Scotch whiskey, which is the whole whole pizza. And you've got like different, uh, different aging, different barrels, different ways of distillation, a few different bits and bobs. But basically there's a huge gamut of flavor um, and smell. And then when you take bourbon, you instantly take out half the pizza because you have some oils, right. which are 51% minimum corn. And then you also have new American oak barrels. Um, so that imparts like a, a common sort of half a pizza. There are variances there and people will argue with me, but they're no, I generally do. wankers. Yes. Um, so then there's like <laughs> the other half, which is that's where the difference is. And that's what you have to focus on. So yeah. the other thing that we noticed culturally was um, we would go into, um, so I go into bars in, like, in Japan, Australia, in Europe, even in the States when they're talking about Scotch whiskey or barley based whiskies and they would sit there and talk they would talk about um, the aging and how how it was distilled the particular distillery the length of the still like he was talking about with Glen Morangi tonight yep. um, and then also a few other bits and bobs and then the particular notes but when you go to Kentucky and Tennessee which I really respect you go in there not about that it's they don't give a fuck about that it's like about the sweetness the boldness like there's they focus on the half of the pizza which yeah. you should do um, and it's like they're, they're having it with certain sort of foods which are generally got a higher sort of oil or fat content. So something like um, like grits or um, like ribs or uh, mac and cheese, that sort of thing. So we looked at that culturally and how that would cut through and then also why they're focusing on a particular uh, section of the flavor profile. So if you imagine the flavor profile is this big and you've got like the lighter notes up here and the super heavy notes down here and they focus heavily on that body. Yeah. And that's the half of the pizza that they're talking about. So we tuned a glass to suit that. So for, for example, yeah, so we got way closer to, your nose is way closer to the spirit surface, and then you've got a, a wider opening, and then you've got a less sort of tapered smell here, but it also takes away the circular air. So the less tapered, does this cause the, does this cause the whiskey also to move faster towards you? Because um, honestly, that was like one of the first things I noticed, I was like, man, this was a lot faster. Yeah, you're correct, yeah. So basically, it, it comes faster, um, it's bolder, um, it's also smoother um, and it takes away a few a little bit of the volatile so um, sometimes you want that in scotch whiskey uh, but it's generally in bourbon there. you yeah, yeah you, you try and move away from that yeah because yeah. sometimes the proofs are like super high yeah. so you try and blow that off a little bit so, perfect yeah awesome. so that and then also we put a stem on it um, people ask why we put a stem on it um, or the code name is the chode um, but we have, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we have um, so in Kentucky Tennessee they add ice to the to the whiskey a lot of the time because it's hot down there. So you don't have um, hands. No, so we have like a step in between. So you oh, go so you from like the, ice. Yeah, so you can yeah, you can pour the whiskey at room temperature. You can also um, just have it isolate your hand heat from it by having holding the stem. Uh, and then you can add ice but not melt the ice. Like it's legit. It's I mean it just took a second to think about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean obviously so good anytime it's good design, there's obviously reasons behind it. And there yeah. should be logical reasons you can reach the conclusion of. And so that's I mean that's why you're here right now. So that's yeah, yeah. what we're talking about. So um, awesome. So, so yeah, the cool. only, the last question I have for you, yeah. and I think we've talked about this privately in like DMs, but like, why 50 bucks? Why like, 50 to bucks? Me, to me, like I told people before, like yeah. the Glen Cairns are going to continue to stay popular because they're like six bucks. I know. And like these for 50, the, the irony of course, is somebody asked me, so what if they were 25? I was like, I'd probably buy two. Yeah. And they were like, what if they were 50? And I was like, I'd definitely buy three. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know what it is about that 50 bucks that just, I, for, you know, for some people it's really going to be sure. a line for them. They're going to be like, I, I just can't get into this because are you going to get $44 more in terms of what you're nosing? Like, yeah. you know, taste being well, subjective. Some people, I think, will. I, can, I think some people really dig into it, will, and some people won't. But yeah. What, I mean, what do you think? Okay, so this is one thing that we don't really chuck on the website. Um, and I guess it's kind of an exclusive view, but, and we still won't chuck it on the website after this. So we have uh, internationally recognized ethical and environmental uh, accreditations. And the other thing with this particular glass is it's made of titanium crystal. Okay. Um, which we don't mention, they're all hand blown. So that's, um, it's it, like we want to look after the workers that make this, and then we also care about the environment. You and literally do not mention that, and that's like literally I'm, something I'm not people going to would, mention it. People would, so we're going to mention it. No, no, but the reason why I don't do that is because I think that should be a fing 
baseline for every business that exists. So I don't want to be like shouting from the rooftops when I think that should be a normal thing. Yeah, no, I, so I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Although like heaps of people that tell me I should mention that, uh, and also the material. But we always underpromise and underdeliver, and that's part of like our company. That's good business. Yeah, that's like that glass is just gonna get better and better, and you can discover things about it. Like for example, the heating channel in this. That's not mentioned on the website. There's a, yeah, no, there's until a, you mention it now, it's like, oh, that's, a, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, so like if you hold it like this, it will heat, and if you, uh, any other grip, it will maintain the temperature because of the thermal mass or the, the way that the glass is shaped in the bottom. And that's the, that the only way to make that is by hand blowing. And then we also want to look after the people that hand blow these things. Like, we're not, we don't f around. That's like, right. <laughs> as, as Australians say, we're not here to f spiders. So, like, we're, <laughs> we, we, yeah. We, we're serious about it, and I don't think we should shout from the rooftops by doing something that's um, ethical and environmental. I think it should be just normal part of the course, and I wish more people did it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. All right, well, I guess the real last question would be, like, what do you guys have in the pipeline? Anything new coming out besides this? Or is, are we, I mean, this just came out, so I mean... Yeah, yeah. My mate James Barr has a few bits and bobs there, but um, we just, uh, a week and a half ago, we released the motorbike, um, a um, Cafe Racer BMW. Um, and there'll be there'll be some surprises coming. So there's a um, a few people have pieced it together as to where I'm living at the moment. So there's um, there's something coming, uh, which has been a year and a half in development. Um, and there's, there's there's more surprises to come. But I, I can't I can't really say. Um, but if you yeah if you follow our Instagram or um, see the Instagram sort of stories, you can kind of piece it together. So like some people have pieced pieced it together already, um, but you know, I'll leave it up to you guys, but that's that's what you should focus on. So where, the, where can they find you then? Uh, at Denver Lily on Instagram? Yeah, Denver and Lily. So um, D-E-N-D-A-N-D-L-I-E-L-Y. -E Not L-O-V-E-L-Y. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, our website's the same. Uh, Twitter is the same, but I never use it. And there's um, uh, Facebook as well. There's another, another sort of avenue, but yeah. Thank cool. you, thank you. No problems, man. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there you go. If you guys have any questions, comments, Whatever concerns, uh, leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, no, go give them a follow and go go buy one of these because nice. because of what you said that you don't even mention on your website. <laughs> no, we, we don't do that. Yeah. Anyway, cool. That's legit. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Is that it? Ooh.